Today on Lockdown Red Wings, which pending free agent defensemen and goaltenders should Detroit resign, if any? Your Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Lockdown Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. Scotty's the host over at Lockdown Tigers, as well as a freelance journalist for the Detroit News. While I am a uh, podcast producer for the Daily J, a WWJ News Radio podcast. Forgot my credentials there for a second. Um, so, yeah, we're going to continue our mini series. This was intended to be kind of a three parter. We were going to break it up forward, defensemen, goalies. But then as we were talking, Scotty, we were looking at the guys who were left. And we were like, these are all pretty quick conversations and guys who are pending free agents and whether or not they should come back. So we opted to basically just combine them into one episode and knock them all out all at once. Scotty, do you want to lead with defensemen or goalies? And which of those of those respect, which in those respective groups do you want to lead with? Um, I think I think we should save goalies for last. Okay, that's probably the most interesting part of the conversation anyway. So make people wait or just simply scrub through whatever they decide no, to do. Don't tell people that that's an option. That's not an option, guys. There is no <laughs> scrubbing option. You cannot fast forward these, actually. <laughs> you have to listen to us talk about Robert Haig and Jordan Osterley. Let's start with minutes. Robert Haig. You want to? I would love I, nothing more, actually. You know what? Fine. I will say this. I'm not even going to get into advanced analytics. Or not. I will get into advanced analytics. But I'm not going to get <laughs> if into analytics. If I know analytics. one thing about Brian Fisher, it's going to be he's going to get into advanced analytics. I, I'm not even going to look at his stats is what I meant. Like his point totals. Because none of these defensemen put up any type of stats yeah. that are even worth mentioning. That's not going to be a reason to, to or not to bring them back. It's not even really worth bringing up. But of the four defensemen, I, let me narrow it down. Of the three pending UFA defensemen, because one of these guys we're going to talk about is an RFA, he, I think you could make the best case for bringing back on a contract. But that being said, just because you could make the best case for bringing him back doesn't mean that it's a winning case. Uh, because Robert Haig, Scotty, if I'm going to speak honestly, the answer is still no. You probably wouldn't bring him back because if you look at the free agent, even though it's a weak free agent pool, you could – you're looking to upgrade this team and you can upgrade a Robert Haig. Yeah. For me, this is uh, a similar conversation that we had to a couple of players yesterday where the only way I would be okay bringing back where I would be okay bringing him back if it was a two way. And I'm not sure that that's really what he's looking for. Um, and as I always say, you know, market determines value. So at the end of the day, whatever, the market is for him is is what he'll end up doing, and he will play hockey somewhere next year. But um, yeah, I I think the the simple answer, if you're just going NHL contract or let him walk, you're gonna let him walk. Uh, I I agree with that. But if the Red Wings announced that Robert Haig signed got got re-signed on a two way deal, I think honestly I would be actually be pretty excited about that. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the only way it gets done and that it's acceptable. And I mean, granted, he's only making he only made eight hundred thousand dollars this year. Yeah. Uh, and it was a one way deal. And of the defensemen we're gonna talk about today, he was the best one. For sure. That doesn't mean he was good, but it means he was the best of the guys we're gonna talk about. One of which these guys one of the guys we're gonna talk about didn't even play this year. But right. uh he still was not good enough to solidify himself as the sixth defenseman. The Red Wings yeah. were rotating three seventh defensemen because none of them could ju could justifiably win the full-time sixth D-man spot. Uh, he ended up playing, how many games did he end up playing in this season? He ended up playing 38 games this year. Uh, he had seven points, which again, doesn't matter. But I mean, if you the reason why I said of the guys we're going to talk about, Robert Haig, you could probably make the best case. Again, not a winning case, but the best case out of the guys we're going to talk about for bringing him back is simply because he was an above replacement level player, just barely um, at expected goals above replacement. His expected goals above replacement was 0.6. So he was like just a hair. He basically isn't essentially a, a, a replacement level player. Like he's a hair above it. He's not straight zero. He's a replacement level player. 
who was seventh on the team, the team in expected goals for percentage relative, which is a very cherry pick stat. And I won't deny that, but basically that means in his 542 minutes and 38 games played smaller sample size. And some of the guys on this list, you know, he was a asset on the ice. He helped on the ice rather than hurt on the ice, essentially relative to his teammates. And that's a very cherry pick stat. And if you're looking for one stat to try and justify resigning a guy, like that's just not enough, right? Like you need more than that. I think he was, I think he was a very serviceable seventh D man. He was pretty good at zone entry denial. I think that's where he thrived, but in terms of like what his skill set is, but it just wasn't enough to solidify himself as sixth D man. And again, I think, and this is going to be the ongoing theme with a lot of these is despite all of that, I mean, I'm talking about the the boons to a guy who just couldn't solidify 60 men. I, I just, in the end, you can upgrade that position on the free agent market, especially on a team. He, he, he shoots left. You don't need more left, left defensemen. You need right defensemen right now. So yeah. like all great points. It, I'm with you. If you're going to bring him back, it's got to be a two way deal for sure. Yeah. If, if you're. It really does depend on role. If you're saying, okay, where does Robert, like, are we going to bring back Robert Haig to be a seventh D man? Then I would say, no, you, you can upgrade that, uh, you know, pony up another 200 K go get a seventh or, 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 you know, even sixth D man, uh, for a little bit more money and, and upgrade the position. But if you're just looking for organizational depth, you yeah. can certainly do a lot worse on on like two way depth defenseman than Robert Haig as well. So he he is the perfect like Grand Rapids call up guy, and so that if yeah, that's, well, like I mean that's yeah. what a replacement level like we people yeah. throw around the term replacement level player. Now that's literally what that is like a replace a replacement level player is if if you were to have a, a chart that isolates off to each level of professional hockey. An, a, a replacement level player would be the line that separates NHL from AHL. That That is the definition of, that literally is the definition of a replacement level player. So having that as a two-way depth guy is a, a perfect role. So okay with that. And then obviously, again, if, if you're talking about just him being the seventh D man, I agree, probably let him walk and upgrade. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's the end of that conversation. We both yeah. agree. No, unless it's like a two-way deal. Uh, Scotty, who do you want to do next? Um, probably a short one here. It's already, yeah, I think, uh, I, I mean, let's just be for time's sake. Again, we're running up against the end of the segment here. I think it's pretty easy to just do the dude that didn't play hockey this year. <laughs> Mark Pissick. Yeah. It sucks too. Cause I was actually looking forward to seeing Mark, P Mark Pissick. Uh, we liked that deal. Yeah. Because it was a really short term deal. He brought a veteran presence again, and his numbers showed he was a very defensively responsible guy, a lot like Olimata. And so I was pumped for a team that, struggled defensively to get a guy who's going to uh, come in and immediately slide right into the system Lalone wanted and bring a kind of a leadership quality. Cause he wore an a with the Buffalo Sabres as well. But then, yeah. you know, he it was the Achilles surgery, Achilles repair, and then he suffered the setback, never played. I mean, like, again, if you want to play devil's advocate, you could say sign him to another league minimum deal. But like at the same time, you could just go out there and upgrade. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I I think this team, and this is a conversation that we'll we'll probably have throughout this show, and or maybe at the end, is, um, like this team is going into last year was still in. Let's take flyers on guys like part of the rebuild, and I think this year you're like we're looking for established, you know, players that we know are going to produce or we know what they are going to produce because we're trying to win hockey games. Uh, and, and and get over the hump and make the postseason. And so I think the the not that they might not take a flyer or two, but I think the the mass kind of like question mark signings are are probably things of the past, unfortunately, for Pissick, uh as far as staying here. I mean, assuming he can like get back to playing hockey. He'll get a league minimum exactly. somewhere. He'll, someone's gonna give him a contract Absolutely. somewhere. But I just 100%. don't think that the Red Wings were looking to make that step forward, you know. It's unfortunate there's no what point. happened. Yeah, yeah, there's no point. It's unfortunate what happened. I was actually really looking forward to seeing him play. Me too. We we can go back and find the episode. <laughs> we were actually pretty excited about about a league minimum <laughs> Mark Pissick signing. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, was he league minimum? He felt like he was. He was eight hundred fifty thousand. So it's slightly above okay, league yeah, minimum. Yeah, a little bit more. But essentially, like, essentially. 
Uh, we're going to take a quick more. break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about Jordan Osterle and Gustav Lindstrom. Not, maybe not necessarily in that order. We'll see. Whatever Scotty decides, he's the one who really uh, makes the calls the shots here. But first, <laughs> so I got to talk to you guys <laughs> about eBay Motors as soon as it loads because it the the tab crashed. You no, know who me. does call the shots? You when you use eBay Motors. Oh, what a great transition for a championship team. It's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle, Scotty. Every part needs to fit just right. What do you drive? I drive a 2014 Dodge Dart. That you know what? I am Isn't significantly it, taller than my car. What is it with every single really tall person I know driving a really tiny car? <laughs> yeah, it's it's like, an adventure. I have a but six, it gets great gas mileage. So my buddy Troy drives a Sonic, which is like the tiniest little Chevy. My buddy <laughs> Jay, who's like six four, also maybe six five, drives like uh, a Chevy Cruze. Like, nice. What is with really tall people driving really tiny cars? We're very get... gas mileage conscious. Yeah, or you're just poor, Scott. <laughs> okay. <laughs> with eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know that part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win with the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Segment two, Locked On Red Wings podcast. To be fair to you, Scotty, I got my car pre-owned so but it's not a tiny one but i'm also not very tall i'm five foot nine and i drive a a fusion so nice but i got it pre-owned and now it's paid off i'm gonna drive that i'm gonna drive that till it dies proud of you till wheels fall off (laughs) uh so anyways i'm not throwing shade at scotty let's talk about these other two defensemen that are pending free agents and i guess free agents can't kind of in air quotes and in regards to Gustav Lindstrom, do you want to talk about Osterle or Lindstrom first? Uh, honestly, I, I I don't know, but like I have lumped these two together for like the entire season plus. Like I, they're just like the same defenseman to me. Really? Yeah. See, the only reason I, Lindstrom stood out to me is because he was a Red Wings draft pick and he was an RFA. And that's like the entire time in my head, the only time I would really watch the defense, or that's not true. The only time I would watch this, the third pair is when Lindstrom played because I was hoping to see a step forward out of him. Sure. And we never really got to see that. I never really paid attention when it was Osterley out there or Haig out there. Although Haig ended up catching my eye about halfway through the season. Oh. I was like, okay, he's not, he's not terrible uh but when it comes to gustav lindstrom we were hoping to see a step forward and like hoping to see him solidify like this was it was his spot to lose right with this team's desperate for right-handed defensemen he's a right-handed defenseman and he was still losing out ice time to guys who were having to play on their offhand on the bottom pair like in jordan osterley and robert Hague. and it just it the rumor is and the rumor has it he's looking at contracts overseas because it sounds like even though he isn't restricted free agent, arbitration eligible, it sounds like he realizes he doesn't necessarily have a fit in the NHL. And I tend to agree. I mean, last year we saw, I thought we saw flashes of a guy who could be defensively responsible. This year it felt like the bottom fell out. Yeah, you know, I, well, we talked about it during our player grades series as well. Like this really was his job for the taking down there at the bottom, like the entire season, this team was just desperate for anyone to step up and be the sixth defenseman, like literally anyone. And he was one of the players that was heavily in the rotation to try to find somebody that would stick. And it just never really happened. Like you said, I mean, it's a, it's a guy that you were kind of hoping would take. I don't think anyone expected him to, you know, be a top four defenseman at any point, but like you were hoping for at least a big enough step forward where you could be like, Hey, I'm comfortable with him in the third pair. And that just didn't happen. And yeah, the, uh, the, the Europe rumors are 
uh, are, are flying around. And yeah, if that's what he wants to do that, you know, good for him. That that's awesome. Uh, can, can maybe find a, a more, um, stable like contract over there. Right. Cause if he stayed over here, I'd imagine it, it it's going to be a lot of like depth and one year and moving around kind of deal. So if he, if he can go overseas and kind of get a more solidified longer term security, that's the word I'm thinking of then. Yeah. Good for him, man. But I, uh, yeah, as far as this year's goes and as far as what the wings should do with him, I, I don't think there's really any question that he's, uh, he's not going to be brought back. And like, it's tough because he is an RFA. So like your gut instinct is like, yeah, they'll sign him to something. But I just don't see, especially with the guys coming up through the system, I don't see Gustav Lindstrom, even though he is like that highly coveted right-handed shot, I don't see him being able to maintain a roster spot over guys like Simon Edvinson who are coming up. So I just... Well, again, if you're talking about... He might get a new... Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I didn't mean to cut you off. But like, if you're talking about improvements, um, I, I think getting... Letting him walk despite being you know, an RFA and having team control is you're, you're going to save, you're not going to spend the money that you'd give him and you can turn around and give pretty similar dollar signs to, uh, I don't know, uh, a, a veteran who you think can maybe be a, a little bit better as a sixth or seventh defenseman and shoots right. Like it, it it's, it, it's just not it, right side D is definitely in need, but it's not so much, uh, I don't think the wings are d- that desperate, des- desperate, I guess, but like for depth, not necessarily just for like anyone, obviously, if they just wanted a right hand shot, then they'd hold on to them. But um, I-, I think when it-, it comes to like a depth piece that shoots right, I, I don't know why you don't just go out there and find a, a dude in his thirties that you know what you're going to get out of him and, exactly. and give him 900 K to a mill and, and call it a day. Yeah. Like a Mark Pissick, um, right. who unfortunately didn't work out. And like, it, it says a lot about where they think he is in his development that on a better team this year, he played half as many games, right? You know, last year he played 63 games this year. He played 36. He played less games than Robert Haig, who was, he's only 27, but you know, was kind of that guy you were just talking about. He played less games than Jordan Osterle, who is, we might as well start talking about, 30 years old. Like, he is that guy. Jordan Osterle played, what, 52 games this season with the Detroit Red Wings, and he was kind of like your de facto seventh defenseman most of the time, sixth defenseman most of the time. Uh, got ro- rotated out a couple times for Haig and Lindstrom, but, like, he was the guy in your front runner yeah. as your seventh D-man throughout the season, 11 points in 52 games. I mean, he had a fine two years with the Detroit Red Wings. I don't have any complaints about your roster late. Cause I think you got what you paid for and yep. him. He gave us one absolutely highlight real goal. Um, yes. and that, that <laughs> overtime winner what was it against the flyers. So his first goal at the Detroit yeah, Red Wings as a Michigan first. native. Yeah. His first goal with the Detroit Red Wings as a Michigan native native was an OT winner at home, which was like hype as hell. But like that's the that's the career highlight for Jordan Osterle. It's just it's another guy who like if it's a depth contract, whatever. But you know, I don't see him, especially at one point three five million, like really necessarily being brought back. And again, a, same conversation can be said for a lot of these guys outside of the RFAs because their negotiations 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 tend to happen in the off season. When it comes to UFAs, if they're not signed to extensions by the time the season's over, a lot of the times it means they're already gonna it's already been decided. You know what I mean? So and with I think with Osterley, it's pretty simple. And it's, again, the conversation is this team's looking to get better so the team can go out there and upgrade. And Osterley is a player that's good, ready to be upgraded. Yeah, these are just very upgradable, like, depth positions. Like, it, it, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's not like you're... You're talking about oh, like do you upgrade or stand pad on a on a third D man or a, even a fourth D man? You know what I mean? Like you're you're talking about depth defenseman, and if you can upgrade at that, like you're you're going to, and you you should be able to with relative ease. So I just don't understand why you would press it and and you know bring a a, a ton of players back again, as we've reiterated a lot, unless it's more for like a depth thing. But I would imagine that most of these guys would be looking for NHL deals. So, so like what? Out of all the defensemen that could be brought back, you could maybe make a case. 
The overall answer for all these guys is essentially no. Yeah, we pretty much just said no on all four defensemen. And the only one that we kind of didn't say no on was Robert Haig if it was a two-way. Yeah, and like <laughs> I could guess you could say maybe caveat for Lindstrom because he is an RFA. Like It could just get done out of the course of a yeah, like Yeah, sure. We've seen teams like RFA goes – let RFAs go anyways. If they feel like, I mean, we just saw that with Dominic Kubali, <laughs> yeah. right? If they didn't think that they were worth the money they would be getting, it's a different situation with Kubali because he was looking at a huge pay raise. And they didn't think he was worth it. I, the Red Wings paid him less to be here than what he would have gotten as an RFA with the uh, Chicago Blackhawks. But I mean, really, the only one that I, I, I could make an argument coming back for in good conscience is Robert Haig on a two way deal starting the season with Grand Rapids as your call up if some, somebody gets hurt. Correct. So yeah. overall, the, it's a resounding no on all these guys, which is exciting in its own right. I mean, the fact that you're not bringing these guys back does kind of indicate the direction of the team, right? Like it, it's clearly been very intentional that a lot of these guys who are replacement level players have all their contracts expire around the same time as the team looks to upgrade those positions. This is a very upgradable roster right now. There's a ton of roster spots for players, young players to come in and compete and get that roster spot or sign free agents to be plug and play immediate upgrades. That, that's a, that's an exciting idea. I mean, the fact that these guys are leaving is, is, is unfortunate for them, but a good thing for the organization. Yeah. We talk about it all the time. This team has a ton of cap space and is about to have a lot like of holes mil. to fill on a roster. So it's exciting. My knee on the desk that hurt, but uh, Thanks, buddy. Uh, we're going to go to another quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about these goalies that the Red Wings have on their books. Uh, but first, I got to talk to you guys today about Bird Dogs. So Bird Dog is a new sponsor with us here at Locked On. And before the sponsorship, they were kind enough to send me a couple samples. I don't know what shorts you got, but I got one that was mostly a cotton blend, Scotty, and one that was a polyester blend. Yeah. Both these pairs of shorts. And I'm Bird literally Dog wearing mine. Which one? You got the polyester or the cotton? The polyester one. They're amazing. They're I like, feel like I shouldn't just like stand up and show the world my shorts right now, but like, because that feels weird. But like, yeah, they're they're like literally one of the most comfortable pair of shorts I've ever worn. I'm literally wearing them right now. Well, what's really nice about them too is they're when they got these shorts, and they have more than just shorts. They have pants as well, as long as as well as other products. But for our purposes, what we got from Bird Dog was their shorts and. They have an elastic band. They're basically kind of a cross between gym shorts and like khaki shorts, like the nice yeah. ones you can wear on boating. And they all come. I wore them golfing. Now, here's the coolest thing about them. Built in underwear, Scotty. Yeah. If, which is something I, it took me a second to get used to when I tried them on. I'm like, I'm not supposed to wear underwear with these. Like it, it does feel like you're wearing underwear. <laughs> the lining, yeah. But it's just a weird concept. But I immediately fell in love with it. You look better and you feel great wearing bird dogs. Their stretchy fabric makes legs look great and they're comfier than my shorts and pants, my other shorts and pants. They give the freedom to wear one pair of shorts and pants to the golf course, to a meeting date hanging out with a fr or with friends and that's what i was talking about it's like a combination of like gym shorts and like casual or even nice looking it's yeah. one of those they're super versatile and you can just kind of get away with using them anywhere like i'm excited to use the polyester ones at the gym i love the fact that it's got the built-in underwear because one of the things i hate the most at the gym is when my boxers right up all the way up <laughs> there and then i gotta kind of like awkwardly shim the the leg of the boxer brief down so that it's not riding up my butt and my other area and so Without with Bird Dog, you don't got to worry about that because it's all built in, easy to go, and you can just you can do it. You wear them anywhere. So with Bird Dogs, you can go to birddogs.com slash lockdown NHL and you enter promo code lockdown NHL and they'll throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti style tumbler, which I also got with every single order. So you can go ahead and go to birddogs.com slash lockdown NHL and enter that promo code locked on NHL. Segment three, Lockdown Red Wings podcast. Scotty, let's talk about the goaltending situation in Detroit. This isn't new. We've talked about it a lot. Both goalies got to go, right? I don't see any reality where you bring either of them back. Yeah, I'm with you, man. I mean, I guess we can go one by one here. Do we have to? Uh, I mean, we could just clump them together, really. Like, let's be honest. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I just like their paths to get here are very different. Like, uh, I mean, Ned was getting paid a decent amount of money and was expected to be the 
one B at worst, potentially even like a one A one A like split uh, at, at some point going into the season and just did not have a, a very good year was sent to the AHL what waivers and all that at one point during the season. Uh, and, and it just never worked out. And um, so, yeah, I, I, I think it's pretty easy. Like I, this is a, another pretty simple conversation. Like one of the biggest areas of improvement that we've talked about already this off season and even during the regular season when it was still going on was this team desperately needs another competent goaltender. And they kept putting different people in net throughout the second half of the season, trying to figure out if they could find one in the organization. And clearly they couldn't. And I think it's a pretty, pretty easy decision to, to let both of them, uh, let both of them walk and try to try to fill that hole in i mean likely free agency but somehow elsewhere um and uh, again you have a lot of resources at your disposal this off season and should have a lot of ability to uh to be able to do that i mean i think this is i i think if you're steve eisman this is one of the biggest issues you have to immediately address as soon as free agency opens yeah. if you're not going to do it through trade you need a backup goaltender and both of these goalies were so far below replacement level goaltending yeah. when they were in the net. It was, and I, I know, I realized that this team defensively still wasn't good. But the fact that, for instance, Nedeljkovic was worse this year behind a better Red Wings team than he was last year, when in the first half of last year, he was borderline Calder contender. It's, it, he's just not the answer. We knew Magnus Helberg wasn't the answer when they signed him last year. It was an option. And that's what Magnus Helberg was again this year. When the Red Wings picked him back off of waivers. He was an option because Nedeljkovic was performing so perfor performing so poorly. When who not who so Helberg got in the net, it was kind of the same thing, right? He looked like a guy who just wasn't an NHL caliber goalie. I think both of them are AHL caliber or in Helberg's case, KHL caliber goalies at best. And it's just this team desperately needs to upgrade those two positions because neither of those guys are. I mean, you don't even need them at the AHL level with Sebastian Costa coming up next year, or even John Letheman of the Toledo Walleye, who I know that uh, every, all eyes are on Sebastian Costa right now, but John Letheman is an RFA because the Red Wings signed him to a, uh, a contract partway through the season. He's the goaltender of the year in the ECHL. He's 26 yeah. years old. His numbers are insane. And I know the Toledo Walleye team is absolutely insane as well at shot suppression, so maybe it's not a good representation of what he's like. But that's 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 how desperate this team is for goaltending that I'm willing to say give John Lutheman of the Toledo Walleye a contract over guys like Nedeljkovic and Magnus Helberg. And maybe that's one of those biases where I, he was more attractive to me because I haven't seen him play and I know what I'm going to get out of Nedeljkovic and Helberg. But, I mean, you can go out there on the free agent market and upgrade both those guys and get a bona fide backup goalie without having a really fraught, like, you know, what you'll get like, that's Eiserman did it a couple of years ago and signing Thomas Grice like this, you know, what you're getting out of Thomas Grice. He was a good backup goalie for one year, not so good for the other, but like, you knew what you were getting out of like a 34 year old at the time yeah. go out there and get a 34 year old backup goalie to back up Billy Huso, who, you know, is going to come in and do a decent job when Huso needs a break and while coast is in the wings. Yeah. I, I think this team, again, we, I talked about it earlier, uh, as well with a couple of the defensemen, but like I think we're kind of past the days of Flyers getting significant playing time, and I think that this team wants established, you know what you're going to get type of production out of players, and so I fully expect them to find a way again, whether it's trade, free agency, whatever, uh, to get a solidified. Uh, solid producing goaltender that you are comfortable with in that 35 plus games in that at least if not better and and maybe can be more of a split with Huso and is that good I I think that that is the direction they go I I highly doubt they're going to walk into the season with like a uh, uh, guy who doesn't have very much NHL experience or like a question mark or like a, like I said, a flyer on someone. I think this, this team is, is really in win now mode as, as they've been in a long time. Yeah, absolutely. So 
it's exciting to look at all the holes that can be filled and all the cap space that they have. But just looking at the looking at the list of players available, you're thinking, mm, go out there and get Aiden Hill. He's having a hell of a year at the Vegas Golden Knights. 27 years old, 914 save percentage. When they made that trade for Aiden Hill out of uh, San Jose, I was like, why? He's not going to make your team better. Look at him, 914 save percentage. Granted, Golden Knights are a really good hockey team, and that helps a hell of a lot with your save percentage. But uh, do it. Yeah. Just the name. I'm throwing a name out there because this team needs something to back up uh, Billy well, Huso. We'll get into that. Yeah, we'll get into that when we start doing the, uh, you know, like free agency watches and stuff. We can start looking at people who – are are maybe poised to to take that spot, but for now, I mean, this conversation again, I think, is pretty straightforward. Where it's just as far as uh, these two gentlemen go, it's it's a no. Yeah. Uh, and again, thoughts? like a lot of no's, this whole show, a lot of all no's. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I think that that's the sign that the expectation is getting higher within the organization and and uh, the fan base as well. And everybody is ready to take this big step forward. And again, I, I think it would be a lot different conversation if you didn't have a ton of salary cap or if, uh, if, if again, like the expectations weren't to go out there and try to make the playoffs next season. Like I think the, the combination of all of those things has really raised the, the bar on not only what the fan base expects the wings to accomplish this fall, but also in the off season, what they expect to be done in the off season. And um, I, I think that that that's healthy and good. Um, but you know, we uh, we'll see, we got a, we got a long off season ahead of us and a lot of money and a lot of holes to fill. So sounds, uh, sounds like a, a potential for a really productive off season. Any final thoughts? We will. Well, we'll be back with a new episode tomorrow. Same time, same place. Your team. Every day. Every day.